Welcome back to Dwarves and Dice, this is Mathematically Correct Crits. The main topics of the video are weapons, game mechanics, classes, races, feats, and finally the mask behind it all. Let's start with weapons. The two main weapons I'll be looking at is the Great Sword and the Rapier. The Great Sword deals 2d6 damage, so one big attack of 7 damage on average, and the Rapier deals 1d8 damage, which will end up doing two attacks later on, each dealing 4.5 damage. So one of the main questions of this video is whether a big attack or two small attacks will deal more damage. Some things to note is the Great Sword is a two-handed weapon so it must be wielded with both hands, so no shield and no shield wielding. The Rapier is a finesse weapon which allows you to use dexterity or strength depending on your preference. The finesse property also comes into play later when talking about classes. The game mechanics are pretty simple. When you roll a d20 to attack, if it rolls a 20, you crit, so 5% of the time you'll land a crit. 95% of the time you'll deal normal damage, which for the Great Sword is 7 damage on average, and for the Rapier is 4.5 damage. When you crit, you double the amount of dice rolled, so on average 14 damage and 9 damage respectively. Therefore, the Great Sword deals more base damage than the Rapier. In terms of classes, there are three main classes. Fighter, which gives you extra crit chance. Paladin for extra damage and Rogue for guaranteed crits. I would suggest taking four levels into each of them, the first four being Fighter, the next four being Paladin and the final four being Rogue. Alternatively, you could take Rogue at level 7 to get your sneak attacks, but this will delay your Paladin feat until level 9. I would suggest taking these four in this order due to the important features of two weapon fighting, the subclass of Champion, Feat of Dual Wielder, and Divine Smite. Paladin, your subclass is your preference. At level 2 you gain Divine Smite which deals 2d8 damage, on average that's 9, and when you crit it deals double damage going up to 18 damage. If you go into the passive tab you're able to turn off the Divine Smite automatic usage and it will ask to use it, so you can only use it when you crit. This saves you expending spell slots when you don't have to. For Rogue, subclass should be Assassin as it guarantees crits and allows you to do extra attacks at the start of fights. Rogues also give you access to sneak attacks, which also double the sneak attack damage on a crit. This takes the damage from 4d6, 14 average, to 8d6, 28 average, at level 7 when I suggested taking. You're also able to turn this passive to an ask passive so that it only uses it when you crit. However, you must be using a finesse weapon to do this, so that's why the dual wielding rapiers is so important. The final class is Fighter. You want to take subclass as champion due to improved critical hit. This reduces the number for a critical hit by 1, so you crit on a 19 or a 20, increasing your crit chance from 5% to 10%. In terms of fighting style, there are two options, Great Weapon Fighting or Two Weapon Fighting. Great Weapon Fighter allows you to reroll a 1 or a 2 on a damage die for a two-handed melee weapon. Two Weapon Fighter allows you to add your ability modifier to your offhand attack. This means that 90% of the time you'll deal 8.33 damage instead of 7 for the Great Weapon Fighting, or if you use two weapon fighting, you'll go from four and a half damage plus three to nine plus three. 10% of the time, you'll be dealing your crit damage, so that doubles the damage, it does not double the additional modifier, so you're going from 8.33 to 16.66 and nine to 18 respectively. Now, two weapon fighting has taken the lead. Let's move on to race. In terms of choice of races, there are two options that increase your crit chance and crit damage respectively. Let's start with Halfling. They're lucky, which allows them to reroll ones on attack rolls, but also skill checks and saving throws. We're mainly interested in the attack rolls, but it's worth mentioning the other two. So with a 10% crit chance and a 5% chance to reroll, that's 5% times 10%, so overall 0.5% chance to crit. Added on to the original 10%, that's 10.5% chance to crit. This is negligible, so let's look at half orcs. Half orcs have savage attacks passive. When you crit, you gain plus one damage die, so instead of rolling 4d6, you would instead roll 5d6. Or instead of 2d8, you would roll 3d8. Overall, this means a two-handed weapon deals 23.8 damage on a crit, compared to the 16.5 damage from the 1d8 weapon. The two-handed weapon is now back in the lead. Now let's look at feats. Great Weapon Master allows you to attack again if you crit. Since you've got a 10% crit chance, with every attack you have plus 10% chance to get an additional attack, so overall you have 1.1 attacks per turn. Dual Wielding allows you to attack twice per turn, and Dual Wielder allows you to dual wield any non-two-handed weapons. This allows for two 1d8 weapons like the Rapier. Now let's get into the maths. The average damage dice of the Great Weapon Master is 4.16 damage. So 90% of the time you'll roll two of these 4.16 damage and you get 7.5 damage on average. 10% of the time you roll five of these dice, so you get 2.083. Adding these together you get 9.58 damage and since you get an additional 1.1 attacks that's 10.5 damage per turn on average. Dual Wielder has 4.5 damage per dice 
So 90% of the time you'll roll one of these dice, which gives you 4.05 damage. 10% of the time you'll roll three of these 4.5 damage, which gives you 1.35 damage. Adding these together, you get 5.4 damage, and since you get two attacks per turn, you go up to 10.8 damage per turn. Now, Dual Wielder has taken the lead once and for all. There are some additional considerations. As dual wielding attacks more often, you'll be splitting your damage more evenly, which allows you to kill smaller targets as well as bigger targets without overkilling them as much, while also dealing more damage overall. Great Weapon Master, however, is the way if you want to have the biggest crits, as the damage is only 0.3 damage per turn less, therefore it's not too much of a detriment if you really want to see a big number, big crit, big damage. Make sure that you turn Sneak Attack and Divine Smite to asks in the passives menu so that you aren't wasting time in spell slots. Finally, there are definitely more variables at play, so please comment below if you've noticed a mistake or if there's another variable that you think makes a big difference. Thank you very much for watching and subscribe for more.